This video is made possible by Express. Nah, I'm joking. I don't have a sponsor. I tell you what I do have. I have something way, way, way better than a sponsor. Today I have a hacker story. But this is not your average hacker story. This is not a regular common play. That's your regular everyday hack that may or may not make the news. This was a hack that broke a world record. The story of $1 billion. The $1 billion wire. One of the most, if not the most, sophisticated, coordinated cyber heist. How much is the score? This is the story of the $1 billion wire. Now, sometimes when you sit there and watch a YouTube video while you eat or while you uh, choke the chicken, maybe you wanted to drown the, the noise of uh, the adult entertainment that you watch. Maybe you use me. Let me just help you paint a picture because in case the word billion doesn't register in your head, okay, that is one with nine zeros next to it. Nine zeros. One zero 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 zero. A story of hacking, planning, patience, dedication, focus, determination, greed, confusion, expensive mistakes, and a hunt for its perpetrators. The hunt, though, leads to a rabbit hole deeper than anyone could have ever imagine. And it all starts with a printer. By the way, I know I captured your attention and you're probably all ears right now, but since I got your attention, bruh, make sure you hit the like button on your way in. Hit the subscribe button as well. I don't care if you're not going to watch me. Might as well help me, all right? A lot of work goes into, the, into, the, into entertaining you, all right? I'm not just some guy you play while you choke the chicken so people don't hear. All right? So make sure you support, man. Ale. So boom. A printer. Yes, a printer that prints paper. Let's go back. February 7th, 2016. Dhaka, capital of Bangladesh. Let me take you with me to the Bangladesh Central Bank. To be specific, accounts and budgeting department on the ninth floor. The director of Bangladesh Central Bank just got off the elevator on the ninth floor and he's headed back to his office. You know, regular every day. Regular average day, you know? He's thinking he's Michael off of the office, ready to crack some jokes, you know, do his thing. That's what the director do, don't he? So boom, he get off the elevator, he headed walking, you know what I mean? Except this time though, he wasn't there to just crack jokes like it's an everyday ordeal. So when he get there, he's called on to deal with a problem. One that apparently been plaguing the office for the past few days. The printer wasn't working. And that's a big deal because it really causes disruption. You understand? The printer was automated. It was hooked up to the bank software. It's supposed to work around the clock. Automatic. Printing papers at the bank's transaction reports in real time. You understand what I'm saying? Boom. All day. But something was up, though. 
Man, most of the day was just spent trying to fix the damn printer. Frustration. All right, call IT. IT can't help. It's stuck. People go in circles. My brother, why you not? Why not to work? Why? I pay you, IT, you know, make work. I fire you, don't. Boss, please, I try, I work very hard. It's not working, I try everything, I try this, I try that. Holy. No offense, you know I love doing accents. All right, I'm certified. I got a pass from my Bangladeshi friends. They let me do it. Moving on. After a great deal of effort, man, all right, success finally comes at the clouds. They were able to restart it. And what do you know? It worked. All the backlog of transactions that didn't print earlier, it started to come out. Rolling one by one. Hey, it's working. It's working. Finally work. Finally work. So people, you know, start getting to work. All right, back to work now. They start picking up the papers. But it became apparent that something was up. It was a lot more statements than they expected. Hmm. That's weird. A little sussy, might I add. Sussy wussy. The director and employees take a look at the statements. You know, just got a cup of coffee. He been fighting the sprinter all day. Hey, let me see. What's wrong, man? So he takes a look at the st statements fresh from the printer as they regularly would. But what they saw, <laughs> they did not expect to see. No one expected to see what they just saw. They seemed unexpected. I don't know if that happened, but if I'm the director, I'd pinch myself to make sure I'm really seeing what I'm seeing and this ain't some kind of... Uh, Nightmare, okay? He's seen fraudulent transactions. What? AK, you talking about nightmare and fraudulent? It's all over fraudulent transactions? Chill out, bruh. Hold on, son. You're just a viewer. Relax, all right? Don't tell me what to do. The only thing I need you to do is hit the like button and smash subscribe and maybe throw some money on the super thanks. Don't be coming at me hot. Okay, don't make me come out the screen and slap you now. Sit down, son. Let me educate you. Let me put you on game. Boom. Yes, fraudulent transactions. But bro, what's crazy about these fraudulent transactions? <laughs> they were coming out from the bank account itself. Hmm? What do you mean? That's just fraud, bruh. No, 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 son. You're not understanding. Listen to me. Usually, in every fraud transaction, hack, whatever you've probably seen before, usually, hackers, scammers, they go for individual people accounts. All right? They hack a John Doe. They send money to uh, uh, Liam Murphy, for example. I made that name up. Boom. This time, though, that was not the case. This was the bank's account itself, son. Not somebody, not, not a customer account, not a client. The bank bank account. You get what I'm saying? Holy. So they look a little closer, man. That's already crazy. They see multiple fraudulent transactions. 
mil here, two mil there, five mil here, totaling up to close to a billion dollars. Billion with a B, like Birdman. Like B A N. If you don't hit subscribe, I'm a commodity. Huh? F O B. Huh? B like uh, Brazilian wax. B like uh, better have my money. <laughs> B like uh, Bitcoin is the future, and you better wake up before they they hit you with the great reset. <laughs> To really understand how we got to this point, though, you got to go back a whole year before. Now, I am not Trapaholics or DJ Holiday, but I can hear OJ the Juice Man in the distance. I can hear Southside in the distance saying, Hey, Trap, hey, Trap, bring that, bring that thing back. I got you, OJ. So I'm going to bring you back to a year prior. This time, I'm going to take you to the Philippines. 2015. One year prior. A whole 3,000 kilometers away. Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation. Also known as RCBC. Three men. Walk into RCBC outside Manila in the Philippines. Three guys. These three guys open four bank accounts using fake IDs and or documents. They open these accounts and they put $500 in each one of these accounts. And they let it sit. Then... These men left, never came back, and their accounts left abandoned. But it got 500 in it, so it's not going to close. You get it? They put that 500 like you put a seed in the ground and water it. <laughs> they just put it there, so, you know, keep the account alive. January 2016. An employee... Checking his email in the Bangladeshi bank. Just a regular day. Employee doing what employees do. Checking his work mail. And he is emailed a malicious email. He opens that email and it installs a malware into the central bank's computer systems. The hackers are now in. They sit back and study. They don't do nothing. They just get in, watch. They study who's who, who does what, what goes where. They just learn how this bank move. And they just lurk in the shadows, not doing nothing, just spying on them. Now I know you know, I know you may think, how does this employee, like you a whole bank employee, and you don't, you, you out here opening spam emails, bro? Like, what's wrong with you? No, no, no. Don't be mad at the employee. See, what happened today here, this is what I meant by rabbit hole. Okay. You know, like, why would he open this malicious file of this email? I asked myself the same question. Like, you work at a bank, not the chicken shop. The whole purpose of a bank is to keep the money secure, right? Cybersecurity at a bank should be top of the top, right? Right. In order to understand, bro, how someone in that position can be made to click on such an email, you, you got to understand, you have to know you would have to know what spear phishing is. If you don't know what phishing is, you know them fake login pages you get 
that look just like your bank login, but it's really a fake site. And as soon as you put in the login info, it goes straight to the hackers. That's just good old phishing. Um, phishing, uh, you know, it's burnt out almost. You understand? It's not really burnt, but to be a successful fisher, you know, it's done at random. Like, I'm, I can't just fish you, bruh. You know? What, they, what these people in the scam community do is they'll buy lists of, 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 of uh, contacts or people. Um, these lists are huge. Like, you're talking about 10,000 people. And, you know, they would spam them either via email or, or SMS. And they would spam them these... Um, they spam them these bait. Right? They throw the bait like real fishing in the ocean or the water. So they would hit them with the same, you know, scam message. Oh, you're logged in, DDD, click here. Uh, but you you got to spam 10,000 people to get back like a few clicks. You understand? Fishing, that's, that's the regular fishing. But spear fishing is very specific like spear phishing is i'm trying to get into that bank this branch spear phishing what makes spear phishing different is it is targeted and crafted based on a target you understand they study the target via social media via the bank site okay Instead of spamming a million people with a scam page and hoping that 5% of the dummies would click on it, no offense to the dummies, it's crafted based on a specific target. I'll give you an example. Now, if you email to just a random employee with any nonsense, they're not going to click on it. Your, your email might not even make it through. Let's say you email the TD event manager. Because I don't know if that's a title, but there's always someone who's responsible for organizing events and such. You know, you learn about the, the target, let's say via LinkedIn or similar websites or just social media. And you learn their position and who's responsible for events and whatnot. And you email them with a, let's say, hey, this is, um, I don't know, cybersecurity conference or something. Or this is, I don't know, bank, whatever event, you get it. You get the gist. And, you know, I would like to invite you and your employees to attend the conference at, um, such and such hotel on this specific day. Um, be happy to have you. There will be food. You put in a couple pictures, make it look good, and please find the invitation attached below. Now you are <laughs> see how you as a viewer, you're already like, wow, this sounds amazing. I know. That's when he would click the invitation, and the invitation is a Microsoft Word file. That as soon as it's downloaded, they got them. It's over. The file is malicious. Now here's the exploit. And I, I wanted to know this badly. Shout out to Satanic on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. Legend says the perpetrators had been known to utilize a old school vulnerability in Microsoft Word. There's a feature in Microsoft Word called macros. This feature would allow Microsoft Word to run code. And that's how they got them. Because as soon as you open that file, voila, code is run, it's in. And once they got in one part of the one computer off the bank network, 
they pretty much got in all of them. It's like uh, the thing that the, the <laughs> I don't know if I can say it nowadays. Uh, this whole pandemic we just came from, okay? You know, it ain't like computers wear masks. It's a whole bank network. And it's isolated, so they got one. They got uh, the hackers got in and stayed quiet, not saying a thing, not doing a thing, just watching and studying. That's the director, that's the uh, uh, employees, that's the teller, that's the him, that's the them. All right? That's the they, that's the her. They just watch and study the patterns of who's who and who does what. This goes here, that goes there. They just sit there watching in the shadows. Not acting, nobody noticed them. Bangladesh is a really poor country. Average income in Bangladesh is $141 USD per month. A billion dollars is a lot of money anywhere. But in Bangladesh, oh, that's a lot of money, bro. That's a chunk of the economy. So how did the Billy, how did such a large theft go unnoticed? How does one take a Billy? And I ain't talking Billy Otto. Well, as I mentioned before, the bank in Bangladesh didn't see the outgoing orders due to the printer malfunctioning. But see, this was no coincidence, of course. <laughs> the hackers purposely, purposefully hid the order notifications and sabotaged the printer to cover their tracks. They planned it all out, bruh. All right, everything was by design. So check this out. Remember how I told you when they got in the system, they just sat and watched. So using the information they gained from watching the bank employees, the hackers were able to use the SWIFT banking system. If you're not familiar with SWIFT, uh, look into it. It's a uh, you know, popular, it's a standard worldwide, really, uh, for international transfers between banks. All right? It's a standard. SWIFT is for international wires or transfers between banks. So the hackers got a hold of the SWIFT system. Using SWIFT, they were able to transfer $951 million dollars out of the bank's own account. Of course, broken down into multiple uh, transfers, spread it out across the globe. Pay attention. I need you to pay attention and not get lost, choking your chicken, or I don't care if you're watching this with a female. Stop rubbing on them thighs, bruh. Listen, I'm about to, it's about to get murky, all right? If I lose you right now, you're going to be lost, super lost in five minutes. This is a real life rabbit hole. All right? Check this out. Before the money could reach the hackers, it had to go through the New York Federal Reserve Bank, the Fed. And I ain't talking FBI. All right? I'm talking the big Federal Reserve you understand? The Bangladesh Central Bank uses an account in New York to settle international transactions. And when they receive requests from Bangladesh, the breach or the money is sent to its intended location. Again, pay attention. I hope you're paying attention. 35 transfers sent out all over Asia. They got to be checked out by the Fed over in New York. All right, shout out Hassan Campbell. Yo, B, there's a chance for coming. I'm on Ticket Ave. Ticket Ave? Holy. 
Hey, yo, B, New York, New York. So it get to New York. By this time, over there in Bangladesh, the printer not working. My friend, I am just chilling. No problem. Printer no work. I call IT. Everything is good. It's fine. They got no clue what's going on. The transfer is already set. And they hit New York, New York. You with me? But when they hit New York, New York, they ain't hit 50 cent. They hit the Federal Reserve. And they had no reason to suspect anything. Why would they? It's just a regular day. A couple milli flying from the bank's own bank account. All right. It is what it is. Okay, all good. Boom. Let me look. Yep, seems good, buddy. All right, sure thing, Bobby. I'll approve the transfer. Let me tell. So the Federal Reserve, at this point, got no reason to suspect any issues since instructions were coming from SWIFT, which is a a, a standard. All right? They're verified. They got a blue check, but not on Instagram. All right? You understand? SWIFT kind of holds the money in between, and they send out money orders. You, you know what I mean? So it's like, I got your money here. I'm a cop buddy over in a different country. And because it's swift to swift, it's guaranteed, you know? So it's guaranteed. It's verified. They process it. And they send. Money's flying to the hackers' uh, 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 bank accounts, the drop accounts, if you will. <laughs> One of the transfers... It was a transfer for $20 million. It, this one successfully made its way to a bank account in Sri Lanka. By the time this one hit Sri Lanka, back in Bangladesh, the bank folks, the employees, they fixed the printer. And they finally caught up to what's going on. They're like, holy, 35 transfers, a billion dollars? Like, you know, <laughs> there's been robberies before, bro. Cyber and non-cyber. But a whole billy? What is this, money heist? Holy. Now, usually, uh, between banks, there's some called a stop payment order. For whatever reason, um, if the bank needs to abort mission... They issue a stop payment order. The bank worried that any stop order they attempted would be too late. But to their surprise, the Fed over in New York, they marked 30 of the transfers for manual review. Because see, most of them really get processed by the machine. But if it's a sussy wussy, if it's a weird, suspicious transfer, they'll mark it to be manually looked at by a human. The automated system only caught these payments because words in the transfers were similar to uh, those in the name of a shipping company that had been blacklisted by the U.S. government. These 30 transfers they made up a large majority of the of the whole money, the score of the hacker's heist. Really, they they nearing eight hundred seventy one, eight hundred seventy one million roughly. They were inevitably canceled because the New York Federal Reserve got the stop payment order before reviewing the flag payments. Like I said, one billy <laughs> would have been a devastating blow to a country like Bangladesh. You know? But thanks to a simple coincidence, most of that money really didn't make it to the hackers. But what about the funds that they did get? The money they actually took home. All right? The 20 million that made its way to Sri Lanka, 
it deposited into an account of a business slash company called the Shalika Foundation. What is the Shalika Foundation? It's a fake business between me and you, but as far as they know at that point, um, it's a nonprofit organization. The Shalika Foundation. We give them back to the people. Yeah, right. <laughs> Holla. The money <laughs> was sent from New York to Sri Lanka using Dutch Bank as an intermediary. You paying attention? Good. When the Sri Lankan Bank saw such a large transaction, a fat transfer, all right, big bag, on its way to, to a nonprofit, like, oh, at least, son, hold on, ain't nobody that generous. It set off alarms, right? And they sent the money back to Dutch Bank for a review, a manual review. Now, brace yourself for this part because, you know, I've went over this a lot before the research, during, and as I'm telling you right now, it still never fails to, like, it's funny and just crazy. Just listen, bro. Let me stop talking. <laughs> Holy. After investigation, oh boy, it was discovered to, to, that the word foundation was misspelled. It was spelled Shalika Foundation. Hmm? Think of it like this. You a Dutch bank. You got $20 million flying. All right? The hackers over there are sweating. They went through a whole year of meticulous planning and, 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 and zero-day exploits and, and, and studying and disabling notifications. And, you know, they did it on a day where it's like the weekend in Bangladesh, Chinese New Year over there. Like, they went through all this, bro. But Shalika Foundation? If it's if we're talking the most expensive uh, mistakes in the world, as far as I know, in my personal life, this is the mo this is a twenty million dollar mistake. This is worse than Brick Cross uh, uh, rapping what he rapped on a song. You ain't even know it. Seriously, bro, brother, and. I don't drink like that, and I don't do drugs. But I don't care if I was wasted, drunk, high out of my mind. I would never spell foundation, F-A-N, Dation. That's just out of here, bro. Like, come on, son. Like, you're some of the, you're the most elite hackers. <laughs> foundation? Imagine the Germans over there. Huh? Get the transfer. After review, this transfer is weird, weird. 20 million on profit. You giving 20 million to a non-profit? That's already weird. And then foundation? Come on, son. Come on, son. Foundation. Really, bro? If I could look at the hacker face to face and just ask, bro, like, huh, come on, brother, foundation. And I don't recommend what they did because it's criminal, this is theft. But foundation? You really registered a business as foundation. Man, they need, you. <laughs> I, I am not a fan of this, bruh, that's horrible. 
that spelling mistake cost them 20 million. I guess the hackers were not fans of this, huh? <laughs> now, there is no Guinness World Record or anybody keeping records of, of uh, <laughs> biggest scam, okay? There is no Guinness World Record for scamming or hacking. That would be funny, though. Uh, you know, but just think about this. This one operation broke, if those records existed, it broke two records. Number one, a billion dollars wired. The highest ever uh, attempted, you know, because they didn't get it off. But they did manage to send a billy. So record number one, world record, the highest amount of money, a billion dollars. <laughs> and in the same sense, the same operation, the same play, if you will. Record number two, world record, the dumbest, or I'm sorry, the world's most expensive mistake. You know, I've known about this story for a while before researching and doing this video, but foundation, bro. Like, for some people that did all this planning, you understand to have such... <sighs> Brother, what I can tell you for my cyber crime, or, or not crime, from my hacker knowledge, the information and the knowledge they have had to have to execute this, especially in 2016. Like this is not early internet days where everything was weak. They did this play in 016, bro. That's not that long ago. They got all this knowledge, but they can't write foundation. <laughs> foundation. <laughs> All right, guys, now let's remember what they did is wrong. Don't go becoming, uh, don't go doing fandom over them. That's, that's never going to get old. 20 million. 20 million, Mr. Foundation. Nah. You know, again, I don't encourage or endorse crime, but. I'm just devil's advocate. I'm putting myself in their shoes. It takes a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> nuts, okay? And I'm not talking um, YouTube. It takes a lot of, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the nuts, like peanuts. It takes a lot of those to go ahead and register a fake business for money laundering purposes like they did. If I was you put in such position, I would never, by the way. But if I was, I would be on point, bruh. Sharp. Foundation? Will you sleep when you went and put that? I'm done. I can't, bruh. Moving on. So, needless to say, Dutch Bank did their investigation, and <laughs> the the name wasn't it, but it definitely, <laughs> all right, it became apparent, bro. Come on, son. Shalika Foundation, or should I say, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. <clears throat> Shalika Foundation oh, there. was a fraudulent organization, a fake business. A fake nonprofit. So this would be the 31st transaction to be stopped. So out of these 40, 50 transfers they sent, four landed. Four payments successfully landed. They got four out of all of them. Four of them. I guess they were on point and they spelled it right this this time. <laughs> which which ones? How much? All right, boom. Pay attention. 
Remember earlier, one year ago in the Philippines, when I told you a uh, 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 couple guys walked in a bank, RCBC, and opened accounts, put $500 in them? Yeah, those four accounts created in the Philippines is the beginning of the story. All four of those transactions made their way to those four bank accounts. Ah, uh, Filipino. Philippines had no problem. Yes, send the money right now. I take, I take. Man, that make me want to visit Philippines. You take. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Their women are pretty, huh? Hey, listen. I don't have a couple of milli, but I got something else you could take. <laughs> Let me tell. The total of the accounts was only $2,000 to begin with. And overnight, you know, <laughs> the millions flying from over there, it ballooned it to $81 million. You'd think this would raise suspicion. You know? I ain't gonna lie. I try to send, um, this is Canada, you know? I think I was just buying a car or something. I don't remember what it was. And the Interact Limit in Canada, which is like Zelle in the US, it's a transfer thing between banks, you know? Email to email. And I I think I was set out 3,000 via Interact. And um, even though 3,000 is nothing, you know? Like, uh, it's not 10 bands where you need to report it to the IRS, CRA. It's three, three bands. Brother, I had to make calls just to verify. You're telling me you got an account, a bank account, with $500 in it. And 50 million fly to it. <laughs> Boom. 500 to 50 million. Oh, there. You think this would be sussy? Isn't it sussy wussy? You know, I don't think it's right to be wat pocket watching, but as a as a bank, you know, that's, ain't that how banks do? That didn't raise any eyebrows over RCBC in the Philippines? Hmm? Huh? It could have been simple incompetence. Or it could have been an official turning a blind eye. But for whatever reason, 81 milli landed successfully. And uh, the money was uh, withdrawn qu quickly. <laughs> now, sir, quickly they pulled it out, wiped in. They got the wipe down. The money was then withdrawn quickly in cash and cleaned up. All right, they put the laundry in a money laundry. <laughs> oh, they quickly took that cash and headed to local casinos. Now, the money hit, all of a sudden, those RCBC bank accounts <laughs> went from abandoned to extra active. I'm talking right away. They did not waste a single second. They began to wipe down. If money laundering was an art, these people were Picasso, or or what's his name? I don't know. They quickly pulled it out and headed to local casinos to begin uh, cleaning up, you know? They put the laundry in the money laundry. You understand me? Cash money. These anonymous assailants, or... <laughs> As they say in the news, these actors, these bad actors, <laughs> walking through the local casinos with big cash money on them, like it's Birdman. 
biggest life play, boy. I came to, I came to gamble play, boy. Though, you know, the bank is partly to blame. It was also very careful planning on the part of the hackers. Listen, I don't care. I know a lot of people who work in cybersecurity. And everything I do know about the field, I am self-taught. And a lot of times I pressure them. They hate it. But between me and you guys, I know a lot more about it than they do. I don't I'm not going to speak on nobody, but I don't know how these folks got jobs because if they were your cybersecurity team, <laughs> good night. You know, they don't they don't have the fire in them for the for the or the passion for cybersecurity. It takes a real N like myself. You know, self-taught, out of love. I would have told you it was somebody in the system. You know, I would have right-clicked task manager. You know what I mean? Resources monitor. I got my ways. I ain't going to get into it. But I would have found out just knowing based on the type of people I see in the field. Yeah. Even if they had the top cybersecurity people. Listen, unless you had unless you had Norton or Kaspersky sitting down there with you, I'm sorry, bruh. Nobody could have found found that out. And spear fishing is, is dangerous. You know, like I, I I didn't get into it too hard earlier, but don't get it twisted. Spear fishing is dangerous because it is really hard to avoid. And a lot of times, you know, in hacking, I can tell you one thing. And don't go, don't don't use what I'm about to tell you for bad. If you do, I'm gonna put voodoo on you. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Welcome back to the house of knowledge, wisdom, evolution, and revolution. Make sure to click the like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Get comfortable, grab a bottle of water, and back to you, AK. This is Hannah, AK Debris, London.